Let us turn now to a powerful new movie out this week. It's called American Sniper. It's a story of real-life Navy SEAL Chris Kyle. With 160 confirmed kills, he was the deadliest sniper in U.S. military history. Kyle, as you may know by now, is portrayed by Bradley Cooper. We'll talk to him in a moment. But first, NBC's Lester Holt had the chance to interview Chris Kyle three years ago, 12 months before he was tragically murdered in Texas. Chris Kyle was a straight shooter and a straight talker. When they show me that they're going to bring violence to the troops, to our allies, or to the civilians, then I'm going to zoom in on their chest and take them out. A Navy SEAL sniper. Her arms aren't swinging. She's carrying something. The movie starring Bradley Cooper focuses on Kyle's deployments providing overwatch for Marines during some of the Iraq war's most intense urban battles. His deadly aim was legendary. Insurgents even put a bounty on his head. They called you what, the, was it the devil of Ramadi? Yes, sir. For friends like ex-seal Clint Bruce, it took resolve to see the movie. I just want to get the bad guys, but if I can't see him, I can't shoot him. There were three or four times during the movie where I literally just forgot I was watching an actor. I thought I was watching Chris. The thing that uh, haunts me are all the guys that I couldn't save. It was a natural war film, except director Clint Eastwood saw something deeper. This was a love story in many ways. Yeah, it was accompanied by uh, the stress of, of right. departing all the time and coming back, getting re-familiar with his family and then going back into combat. Okay, I need you to be human again. That struggle is the other conflict in this film. It's very, very difficult for a husband to tell you, I'm doing this for you and for our kids and our family, and for a spouse to feel like, you know, it doesn't feel like it's for me. How did you explain that to Sienna Miller? We just sort of talked from day one as maybe old friends. I talked to her about the first time we kissed and the ways that I loved him. Chris Kyle was killed not on a battlefield, but on a Texas gun range, murdered one year to the day after this interview. He was celebrated as a hero. But this shy Texan would have seen it differently. For today, Lester Holt, NBC News. Bradley Cooper joins us now. Hey, Bradley, hey, welcome back. Hey. That was a great piece you did on Chris. Well, what better compliment to get than from a friend of Chris's to say that as he was watching the movie, there were several times he had to remind himself that he wasn't watching Chris. Yeah, that's incredible. You know, and that's really a testament to uh, Chris's family that really gave me so much source material to work off and do research. And Taya Kyle, you know, they, she did, had so many videos of Chris between the tours because you never know if the soldier's going to come back. So it was, it was great. But I never had a chance to meet him. You did talk by phone, is One that time. true, in, yeah. the, in the very early development stages yes. of the movie? Yeah. Did he have any skepticism, Bradley, about Hollywood <laughs> yes. tackling his story? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think he was trepidatious, I would say, and that's why I wanted to call him and let him know that, you know, you don't know me, uh, but, you know, my name is Bradley Cooper. I'm from Philly, and, you know, I want to get to know you, and, and, and I want to go on this journey, and I just wanted to put a voice to my name. And We actually had a nice conversation. It was quite funny. It's been reported that at one point he said about you playing him in the movie, I'm going to have to tie him to my truck, drag him, drag him down the street, and knock some of the pretty, <laughs> pretty off, off of him. Of, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He meant that in the nicest possible way, I like I to think imagine. so. Yeah. <laughs> in a metaphorical way. <laughs> exactly, yeah. No, no literal <laughs> translation here. When you look back at your career, even recently, has that ever been a problem for you? Or do you think there was a turning point where at a, a certain point your looks and your charm hurt you in terms of getting some movies? And maybe did Silver Linings Playbook change all that? No, you know, I got to say, I mean, it only happened in 2011 when that People Magazine thing came out. But I never sort of suffered that. I mean, I was on the first job I ever got was on Alias. And I was not the guy. I was not the good looking guy. I was like the sidekick best friend. So I and in Wedding Crashers, I was the, you know, the jerk. So, so no, I never sort of suffered that uh, sort of, oh, he's too handsome, ever. You talked about Chris's family giving you a lot to work with in this, but you worked with a voice coach. You had yes. to pick up this Texas accent. Yeah. When you go about doing something like that, are there certain words you key in on? Are there certain problem words? Oh, that's interesting you say that. Yeah, you know, there was one phrase. He was like, when I was growing up, the Marines were the biggest, baddest guys on the block. And I used to always love that thing that he said there was something about that that would key me into him so for so and he did say that in an interview and that set you off on the and that, that, yeah but we had a whole other thing tim monic is his name this great dialect coach a absolutely incredible because the thing about texas it's sort of like italy there's dialects everywhere so
So you never know. There's you know, North Texas. There's yeah, South there's Texas, everything. Yeah. And also, Chris was a bit of a specific entity because he grew up in Odessa, moved to Midlothian, lived in San Diego, and he was a SEAL, so he went all over the world. So depending on where he was, his ex accents sort of changed. It's well known now that you also put on a lot of weight, pure muscle for this role to really look yeah. like he looked at the time. I have a little bad news for you. Now that you're 40, it's not as easy to take oh, that weight off. Oh, believe me, I, I learned that. <laughs> yeah. Did 40 freak you out? You were, what, January 5th? January 5th, yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. Did thank it freak you. you out, 40? Are you, what, what sign are you? What are you? Oh, they're going to say, how old are you? <laughs> I was going to say, that's not you're fair. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, I, we're both Capricorns. I was going to say, you're Capricorn yeah. also. Yeah, exactly. You want to hear our uh, astrological forecast, or actually this yeah, one's for yours? Today? What? Now, this is actually for the year. Okay. You've been putting a tremendous amount of energy into your career and life goals and committing to the long haul. This has served your career well, but you're ready for a serious break and more you time in 2015. Is that true? That's what it says. That's so interesting. I don't know if it's true. It came <laughs> but, out I mean, of the back just, of a, like a matchbook or something. <laughs> no, that's the truth, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, do you do you see some U time coming? You got Broadway. You're in the Elephant Man yeah. on Broadway. I don't I don't really see a lot of U time coming well, we'll, up. <laughs> we'll be finished February 22nd. Uh, so actually, it's it, I, I do want to take a little time this year. You know, it was a it was a heck of a year last year. I got to play two incredible human beings, Joseph Merrick and Chris Scott Kyle. So um, yeah, I think I do want to take a little break. I'm not going to let you get off the hook. Did 40 freak you out? You know, coming up to 40 did, but now I kind of love it. <laughs> What choice Four days later. <laughs> oh, yeah, what choice? Yeah. Just embrace well, it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, American Sniper out this week, out Friday. Congratulations on it. And, and continued congratulations over double duty over there on Broadway. You're fantastic in The Elephant Man. I haven't seen it, but I've heard great things, and I'm going to come see you. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Appreciate Friday. it. Always a pleasure.